So you've installed Mod Organizer 2 and you know the basics. You've tried some mods and you're ready for more. In this three-part mini-series, we'll go over every feature Mod Organizer 2 has to offer. Before we get into the video, remember to go down below and hit that like button. That's the best way to support my work and get more videos like this one out there. If you're finding my guides helpful, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. Leave a comment or check out my discord in the description if you have any questions. I will do my best to answer them. Lastly, I have additional guides on my personal channel. I recently made videos about SkyUI and Bethany. I also made an additional guide for cleaning Dawnguard that you definitely need to check out after the last guide. Link to my personal channel down below. Alright, if you're jumping into this video and there's something you don't understand, it was explained in a prior video of my 2019 modding guide series, so go ahead and start from the beginning. The entire 2019 modding guide playlist is down below along with timestamps for this video. To start, let's divide Mod Organizer 2 into three sections, the Menu and Toolbar, Mod Order Pane, and the Right Pane. We'll start with the Menu and Toolbar and work our way down. The Menu and Toolbar provide a means of navigation around Mod Organizer 2 and really have the same functionality. Basically what that means is that you can use whichever you prefer and ignore the other completely. Under File, you can find a button to change which game Mod Organizer 2 is managing. Install a mod manually or quickly visit Nexus. These are also the first three tabs of the Toolbar. View allows you to hide or show the menu, toolbar, and bottom API status bar. You can also change the toolbar icon size and text. This same menu can also be accessed by right-clicking the menu or toolbar sections of Mod Organizer 2. Notifications can also be accessed here or through the icon in the toolbar. Tools gives you another way to access the other four leftmost icons in the toolbar. These are Profiles, Executables, Plugins, and Settings. I'll go over what those do in the toolbar section. Run allows you to run the executables that you've created shortcuts to via this button, but these also appear on the right side of your toolbar. Lastly, help gives you a quick way of getting to the MO2 Discord, MO2 documentation, and a way to report any bugs you may find. Help is also the leftmost icon on your toolbar. Because the toolbar allows you to do everything that the menu does but with fewer clicks, I actually just recommend hiding the menu altogether by right-clicking the uppermost area of Mod Organizer 2 and unchecking menu. Unless you're coming from the Windows 95 era, it will declutter your mod manager and make things more intuitive. Now, let's go over everything that we have not yet covered in the toolbar. Profiles is a very powerful feature inside MO2 that you should really be aware of. It allows you to create different Skyrim mod loadouts if you will, then switch between them with two simple clicks. No manual uninstallation or reinstallation of countless mods required. Even if you only want to have one profile for each playthrough of the game, this feature is still very useful as it allows you to quickly troubleshoot mod conflicts on a duplicate profile where you can freely disable mods without worrying about having to re-enable all the right ones later. This is a massive time-saving feature that you will want to utilize with large mod lists. In Profiles, the left pane allows you to see all the profiles that are currently active in Mod Organizer 2. To the right of that, you can create, copy, remove, or rename profiles. If you have profile-specific save games enabled, you can also transfer saves here. Profile-specific save games can be enabled for each profile individually at the bottom along with profile-specific INI files. I recommend having the latter checked on all profiles as certain mods require specific INI settings, and sharing these could make some values non-optimal. After Profiles, we have the Modify Executables icon represented by two gears. You should know what executables are from the SKSE64 tutorial, but just to clarify, these are the same apps that you run from the drop-down lists. So basically, any program that has to do with modding and needs access to the virtual file system, you should add to this list. The upper buttons allow you to add or remove executables, move them up or down in the list, and restore MO2 default executables to the top of the list in case you mess something up. 
Aside from that, you can modify existing ones by editing their name, path, base directory, and arguments. Arguments are small commands that can change the way a program behaves on startup, and are normally done through shortcuts in Windows, so they can be useful with certain programs. Overwrite Steam app ID is something that I've never personally used, so don't worry about it. Create file in mod instead of overwrite is actually really handy for mods that generate automatic patches, like Percus Maximus or Four's New Idols in Skyrim. If you check it, pick a mod in the drop-down list that you want the files to go to. Normally, this would be an empty mod that you've created. Finally, Force Load Libraries is used for Oblivion, so don't worry about it, and Use Applications icon for shortcuts is fairly self-explanatory. It just uses the desktop shortcut icons for apps in the toolbar. The puzzle piece icon in the toolbar represents tools, and it currently only includes MO2's built-in any editor and some finesse functionality, which is a separate video altogether. For now, we're only interested in the any editor, which is a pretty awesome feature in its own right. With it, you don't have to hunt down any files and edit them in Notepad, especially since MO2 has profile-specific any files. The profile that is opened in the download order pane is the one you edit. Change whatever values you see fit here and click save at the bottom to commit your changes. While you're clicked inside the text window, you can also search the document for settings using Ctrl plus F. The last icon in the toolbar is the screwdriver and wrench, and it denotes the settings menu of Mod Organizer 2. In the general tab, you can edit the language, the style of your MO2 window, so black, white, or whatever, and whether or not you want to opt into the betas of MO2. The user interface can also be changed here. Change the download interface to be more compact, or the colors denoting overwrites in the installation pane. You can also configure mod categories here. Honestly, the default ones are extensive enough for most users, so I wouldn't bother messing with them. In the paths tab, you can find all the directories used by MO2 its root paths, the directory of the game you're managing, that should be special edition. I recommend leaving most of these at default. Just make sure that you are managing the correct game. In the Nexus tab, you can find the Nexus API integration, which allows MO2 to log into Nexus and receive downloads. There are a few other settings pertaining to Nexus here too, but I wouldn't worry about them. The Steam tab allows MO2 to use your Steam username and password to automatically log into the application. This is obviously for users of a Steam copy of Skyrim. Plugins allows you to see all the plugins installed in Mod Organizer 2. What you see by default was included in your base installation. You can find an additional list of third-party plugins on the Mod Organizer 2 Nexus page. In Workaround, you can find a couple of neat settings, like whether Mod Organizer 2 locks itself upon starting an application, whether the default game files are enabled, like your DLC or update plugins, and whether or not Mod Organizer 2 displays mods that it isn't managing. I recommend always keeping the latter on. Finally, the last tab is mostly for development use, so we won't be going over it. On the right side of the toolbar, you'll find shortcuts to any applications you have created. You can do this through the shortcuts button located on the right side of your executables list. This makes it really easy to quickly run loot or any patchers you may have. The shortcuts button also allows you to create desktop shortcuts and start menu shortcuts that run the application through Mod Organizer 2. That way, you can run your Mod Organizer 2 modded game through the desktop directly without first having to open Mod Organizer 2 then running SK. ASC. After your shortcuts, the toolbar menu includes a Mod Organizer 2 endorsement button, which will gray itself out once you've endorsed Mod Organizer 2 on Nexus. Don't forget to do that if you haven't already to show the developers your support. Next is the notification icon, and it is crucial. It shows you critical information about your load order, like whether or not you have any missing master plugins. This is when a mod relies on another mod to function, but its prerequisite plugin is missing from your load order. The notifications icon will also let you know if any SKSE plugins you have installed have incorrect versions after running the game, and also notify you of any files in your overwrite mod. Your overwrite mod can be found at the bottom of your mod list, and is the location that any generated files get stored by default. After that is the update icon, which makes sure that you have the latest Mod Organizer 2 version installed, and the help icon, which is exactly like the help in the menu drop-down list. As you can see, the menu and toolbar really serve the same purpose, so you can use whichever you prefer. I would personally just hide the menu because the toolbar requires fewer clicks. 
This is where I'm going to cut part one, guys. I wanted to make this into one video, but I realized that it would be 30 minutes long if I did. We've covered the main menu and toolbar, and in the next episode, we'll cover the mod order pane and the right panes tabs in the one after. Remember to comment or visit my Discord if you have any other questions. The next video is to the right if it's out, and the guide overview is to the left. My personal channel is down below. Be sure to check it out for additional modding content. See you in the next one.